Well, hello, Internet. Welcome to part two of my JavaScript scripting tutorial. In this presentation, I'm going to go through how to embed JavaScript scripts and HTML files, how to hide JavaScript code from browsers that don't support it, how to create functions, how to create variables, explain what the document object model is and how to use it, define nodes and how to manipulate them, explain how to use for loops, explain how to use while loops, if and else statements, switch statements, event handlers, and how to edit your page content on the fly. Well, first off, I'm gonna show you exactly what you're gonna be creating. This looks like an extremely simple script, and to a certain extent it is. The reason I made it very simple is so that I could explain all those things before that were in those bulleted items in the easiest possible way, which is kind of daunting. Basically what happens here is as you click on all of these different items, a whole bunch of data is passed around, and then you can see the text is changed on the fly. So just stick with me here. You're going to learn a ton of stuff if you watch this whole entire tutorial. But back to the tutorial. As I've already explained in the previous HTML tutorial, this is how you would normally start your HTML code, which the JavaScript is going to be embedded in. Then you would define the header. Then you would just drive some more information that was explained in that HTML tutorial. Give your page a title and then start your script. And what you want to do here is type in script type followed by the equal signs and then within quotes text forward slash JavaScript. Now you don't necessarily have to do this because every browser out there that sees a script tag immediately thinks it must be JavaScript, but this is just considered good form and you should definitely do it. So what am I doing here? Well, you have to understand that a lot of browsers that are out there do not support JavaScript or there are a lot of people out there that do not trust JavaScript. Maybe not a lot, some. So what do you do for those people? Well, you could hide all your JavaScript code so that the page is presented in a nice form, even for people who do not use JavaScript. How you do that is by inserting an HTML comment. Start that out with this bracket here, followed by an exclamation point, and then two negative signs, and then you can type whatever you want here. I just typed that in. And if you do this, it's gonna hide from those browsers that do not support JavaScript, all of your JavaScript code. In my JavaScript code, then I am defining a function just by using the keyword function followed by the name that I want to give the function. And then in between these two brackets here, I have defined that I expect when somebody calls this function to send me two variables, one named ID, one named new text, that I will then use to manipulate that data. And that's how you create a function. Down here are four of the most complicated lines of code and one of the most complicated concepts that you will need to understand to program in JavaScript. And I'm gonna go through what each of these lines of code do. But first I need to give you a brief explanation of what the document object model or DOM is. The document object model or the DOM allows you to access all of the objects that lie in your HTML code. Now every web page is considered to be a document object. So if the browser considers the whole web page to be a document object, how can we work with and edit the HTML by manipulating the document object? HTML documents, as you know, contain text, images, links, CSS style tags, form elements, and a whole bunch more. These tags are referred to as nodes in the document object model. JavaScript can be used to manipulate these HTML elements by referring to them by their defined HTML ID name. In the body of the HTML code below, I create a span that contains text with the following HTML code. And this is what you saw previously. You can see here I defined a span, I gave it an ID number so that I'll be able to refer to it in the future. And then I set that every time somebody clicks on that span with the onClick event handler, which we're going to learn a lot more about, whenever they click on it, it's going to call a function named testing if value and pass along those. Uh, two variables to that function. Previously, I showed you four lines of code, and here they are again. Now I'm going to explain exactly what they do. First line of code here that starts with var node says, I want you to get me the element being the span that I just showed you previously, defined above, that has the ID name. I pass that ID name to the function get element by ID. I then assign a shortcut that I will refer to as the variable named node. That's basically what goes into that first line of code. Here, I'm using a while loop that is used to continually perform an action over and over again, as you'll see here in just a couple minutes. In this case, I am repeatedly asking whether there is text in the span. 
I then, with the next line of code, delete any text found in the span using the function remove child. Put plainly, this code is looking for text in the span, and if it finds any, it is deleting it until the span is empty. The function create text node accepts a variable named new text and creates a new node that will contain the text I give to it. You see, not only is a tag considered a node, but any block of text can also be considered a node in HTML. I then use the function append child to assign the newly created text node to the span. And that's simply what that one line of text right there you see does. Next, I'm defining a function named testing if value so that I can explain to you exactly how if then else statements work. You can see here I'm accepting two variables and then I'm taking those variable names and I'm assigning new values to them. This is definitely not needed. You can cut this out, but it's just something that I did. Then I'm defining a variable named value to return. This is the value that I plan on returning whenever I'm done using this function and I'm giving it a blank space as a value. And then I'm creating another variable that I'm calling node. You can see here the if then else statement is checking whether value passed is greater than value passed to. And for this whole entire thing to come back true, this also must be true value past one must not be equal to value past two. And yes, I know there's shorthand ways of doing all of this. I'm doing it in a longhand way, just so I can explain how to use different pieces of JavaScript. If this is true, which means this is true, and this is true, then this action down here is performed, which means I'm going to take the variable named value to return, and I'm going to assign it value past and then this plus sign here is going to attach to this string as well as this plus sign is going to attach to this variable at the end of this string and then assign it to the value to return variable we see here. If this and this were not true, then this if then else statement would have been performed. And here we are checking in much the same way whether value passed is greater than value passed and using the and symbol here to make sure that both those values go. And you can see here I continue on using the if then else statement and, and doing the same thing over and over again. There are multiple ways to compare values in JavaScript. And here they are listed out. You have your greater than symbol, your less than symbol, your greater than or equal to, your less than or equal to, your equal to, which is two equal signs, and then you have your not equal to symbol, which is found right here. Previously, I referred to the AND symbol. As you see here, it's called the logical AND. What it does is returns true if both the values on the left and right equal true. This right here is the logical OR statement. It returns true if either or both values on the left and right are true. And here's the logical NOT. And when it's placed in front of an operand, it provides the opposite of the result of the comparison. So if A was indeed greater than B, I'm returning a true statement by putting this exclamation point here or the logical not, this would in actuality refer the value false. Here, I'm calling the function edit node text and passing along some variables for it to work with. I already described what that function does. Then I close my function with the closing curly brace, the two forward slashes tell the browser that this is a comment, and that it can ignore everything that follows till the end of the line. You can also make comments using a forward slash star and go across multiple lines as long as you end that comment with a star forward slash. Well, that's all I have time to cover today in this video, but in the next video we're going to continue on going over the switch statement and what it can do for you. Till next time.